Hey everyone, it's Julia and Bambi. We are on a walk. It's loud because we're right by Highway 101. It's just gorgeous here, right? And I was looking at that RV park. That's exactly what I'd do if Bambi and I had an RV. A little loud, but still beautiful. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Julia. I live in a van. And today I just wanted to, well, show you my van real quick. And then I have a sewing studio. It was a little garage that someone was renting out for storage. And I called them and I was like, hey, but I didn't go like this because we don't do that with phones anymore. I called them and said, can I rent it as a sewing studio? Is there electricity in there? And they were like, yeah, there is. I think there's electricity in there. And I was like, well, I also have a, um, like a Jackery battery with a solar panel and I could use that if uh, you don't. Um, and she said, come check it out. And I did. And it ended up having a big giant window, which made it not a cave, not a real garage. And it was a little rough, but um, I fixed it up into a sewing studio. And eventually she removed the garage door, which I had to keep, you know, opening and shutting every time I was coming in and out. And she put a real door on it. So my landlady for my sewing studio is the best. We don't live in there. We sew in there and also work online and sometimes chill out. It's no problem. Um, and we park outside of the studio very often. At first, I was really careful about not parking here and making sure that she understood that my intent was not to live in the studio, but to work in the studio. And over time, we've gained trust and earned trust with each other. And she's always encouraging me to park here now. And um, I don't park here all the time anyway. Um, and every time I'm gone, like in a couple of days, she'll text me, just wanted to make sure you're okay. Um, uh, we'll see you when you get back. Like very welcoming, very nice. For those of you that don't know, I live in a van and then over the course of my van life, I've rented out different places to sew. Sometimes I was rather desperate and there wasn't a place because again, a lot of people think you are trying to find a place to live in and sneak in there at night and sleep. So it hasn't always been easy to find places. One time I sewed for a year in my mechanics extra office, which still had office -y stuff in it, but I kind of took over one side of it. Um, I've rented out hotel rooms. I had a little studio once that was like a large art complex and they rented out spaces. I had a sewing studio here at a mending shop where they rented out spaces. I had a sewing studio at another art cooperative here. Well, no, I didn't have a studio. I had a space where I could set up my machine and work, but then I had to break it down each time. And my dog wasn't allowed. My dog is not allowed in most places, which makes it kind of hard. But in this place she is, which makes my clothing kind of furry. <laughs> but that's just the breaks. I try and keep everything clean. Um, I try and keep organized both in my workspace and also in my van because that's the best way to do it. If you don't keep organized, you don't know where things are. Like right now, where's my scissors? I need a pair of scissors right now. Oh my God. Because that's where I keep my scissors. <laughs> Here's my van today. <laughs> my, uh, well, it's just very simple. I'm getting ready to eat a little sausage, uh, sausage dog that I had from last night. Here's this way. <laughs> That's my new curtain. Um, it's been incredibly difficult, actually, to get something to uh, work for my curtain up there. I've tried, like, five different things, so I just settled with this. I've got a um, little cloth there that I, when I close this, I put the extra cloth there, and it helps. And uh, I've got uh, the screened-in windows little extra windows for air. Almost forgot to show you guys what happened with my van. So recently, uh, this started turning on but not turning over. And I just had the ignition switch there replaced a year and a half ago. So I don't know what happened. It just got really loose one morning, felt weird, and then didn't turn on. So I had a mechanic, you know, open it up there, but he couldn't get the part separate from the back plate there in order to look inside of it or even go just get a new one and put it in. So he was going to rig a remote starter from the 
battery under the hood through here up to here and I just have a little switch to push now I used a remote starter before so I just hook one of these on one of the battery um, thingies and then I hit this on this other connection it's a plug that I unplug and then put the <laughs> and then just go like this and it starts he was gonna rig all of that up through there and I just decided instead of paying money for that go under the hood myself and remote start it and just save the money to actually get this fixed so for now I am able to drive it's a pain in the butt so I'm gonna go ahead and use the money to actually bring it into a shop I mean maybe another mobile mechanic but I haven't had great experience with them uh, so I need to get that part fixed for now it looks like that whoops <laughs> hi it's my dog Bambi most of you know most of you have seen my studio a little sewing studio here you can see the sewing machine there so right now I'm creating these patchwork strips out of random patches, which I'll then cut and uh, press with an iron and make them like this. So anyway, I end up straightening them out. Um, these are each two different sets. And what I'm going to do is offer in my store on Etsy, which is linked at the top of the description of every video. I'm going to make some listings where you can send me your jeans and have this specific set of patches in your jeans so that's coming up uh this is what they look like when they're done just some hippie patchwork pants there the lighting in here is kind of difficult one of my patrons sent me this it's a light and then to top it off she sent me this tripod to put it on that is the nicest thing Thank you so much, Sherry. I know she went through some effort. And then she made this for me. It's an organizer. And she's a new sewer. Look at how good this is. There's the sweet note. I love it. My other friend, Lisa, sends me stuff. This is for Bambi. And she made this little goddess and sent it to me. <laughs> And, of course, this was the gift I covered before in a video from Karen. Thank you all. Oh, this is also from Lisa. And this. I am uh, charging my Jackery station in here right now. So I have the extension cord. And we've got two plugins there. One for the light and one for the extension cord. That's all I got, but it serves me well. I also have... A heater here which is adorable I don't plug that in at the same time that I'm using my iron here which is a beautiful vintage iron isn't it great oh my god I love it so much so anyway I was gonna say I don't know what I do without this place to charge my things and of course it runs the sewing machine which is key actually I can sew in the van with the Jackery but I can't run the iron and of course there's no table I can't stand up in the van and without a table to work on, that that's pretty difficult. Yeah, I really don't know what I'd do without this place. It really saves me from going crazy in my van. I mean, not like van life's terrible, but after like eight years, you're pretty sick of crawling around and bending over and just having it be damp at night. You have to air it all out and gathering water and emptying the toilet and getting fuel for the stove and all of the things, all of the things Honestly, it does drive me crazy. It's one reason I cut off all my dreadlocks because they were just in the way. Here they are. <laughs> yeah, that was on my head. <laughs> so I'm just super lucky to have this space. It saved me. This is a solution for a lot of people. You, there are... I mean, it, there's an unbelievable amount of little garages around here and, like, spaces that people could be renting and working um, if they have certain skills where that you can do it on your own. With the sewing, is pretty simple because it really just requires a sewing machine, an iron, a space with electricity, and some fabric. And I use thrift clothes, so I'm an upcycler. So it's it's not a big investment to get started, and it's not hard to learn how to sew. And it's just one example of what people can do um, sort of in an alternative, you have to have an alternative mindset about what 
opportunities can I create for myself um, that are unusual maybe. But what I'm saying is I'm grateful for this and let it be an inspiration for what's possible for people who are sort of in between regular housing and jobs and homelessness in this sort of middle ground where like we're a little bit different. We're doing stuff a little bit different. We're trying to get by. We're getting by. But um, we need to think creatively about different ways that we can solve our problems. So, yeah, that's why I wanted to show you this today. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to go get to work on these things and I will see you later. Have a great day. Please put a comment down below and like this video and also subscribe and have a nice day.